Rurumai Rudo is a graphic artist from Harare. In this episode of Speaking from the Heart, this incredible fine artist lets us into her art, family, creativity and life experiences. My name is Rurumai Musekiwa. I am a graphic designer by trade and also a fine artist. I was born in Zimbabwe, in Harare, Zimbabwe, and I spent the first six years of my life there. I was born into a polygamous family. Well, my father was polygamous and um, my mother was his second wife. And um, I have three siblings and my father had about 12 other children. So it's quite a big family. So the first six years of my life in Zim are very kind of, um, I don't have distinct memories of um, my time in Zimbabwe as a child, um, but kind of based on photographs and, you know, conversation, um, we lived in kind of a, a plot and there were fruit trees or c orchards and it was a very kind of um, relaxed lifestyle. When I turned six, we moved to Australia because my mother had remarried at the time and she had um, job offers um, as a nurse, um, my stepfather being a doctor also. And they just thought that it was better kind of um, career prospects for them on that end. So we spent about four years in Australia. It was quite, a, quite an interesting transition, you know, kind of being um, my sister and I, being these African children in a new environment and adapting to that. Um, but I think we adapted very quickly. Um, we formed good relationships kind of with um, neighbors and you know, um, my, my parents' colleagues. So um, it was kind of a comfortable easing into this new culture and environment. And um, yeah, I think I, I, I do recall kind of just typical picket fence vibes and um, you know, having friends over and just a really, really great lifestyle. Post Australia, we came back to South Africa. I think both my mother and my stepfather were homesick and uh, we came back and another kind of transition and adapting um, to a new space. It was quite interesting, um, but kind of once we settled back into, you know, being home and being in South Africa, it was a beautiful, vibrant childhood, you know, um, filled with amazing experiences, you know, just your typical upbringing of, you know, visiting cousins, um, these kind of special township, you know, things you associate with the township, but are very nostalgic. Um, we had really, really beautiful moments growing up here in Essay. My biggest challenges growing up were definitely just adapting to a lot of changes and new environments, you know, and really trying to establish a sense of identity, you know, in spite of, you know, a very kind of complex background, you know, my father being from Zim, my mother having remarried to a closer person and just a lot of changes that happened over time. I think that was the difficulty for me growing up. Um, coming back from Australia, being this little, you know, black girl speaking English and trying to, you know, relate to other kids and, you know, having struggles with that. That was a, a huge challenge for myself and my sister. Oh my goodness, my teenage years were, oof. I think anyone can relate to the fact that, you know, your teenage years are a bit of a roller coaster. You know, um, you're dealing with so many different things. Um, I was very rebellious as a teen, to be honest. Um, I was questioning a lot of things. I was questioning kind of my mom's very restrictive approach to parenting. And um, I, I was rebelling, you know, going out, um, sneaking out, you know, to parties and, and that sort of thing. I had this cousin I was very close to. We'd be on the train, literally, going through to Joburg. Um, Yeovil had a very kind of party culture at some point, you know. Um, 
before it became dodgy um it had a very there was a lot going on um kind of in the raga scene and that sort of thing so i spent a lot of time out kind of checking out live shows especially poetry shows because i wrote poetry at some point and um i'd be going out to live poetry shows slam poetry was a thing at some point so um yeah i think i was rebellious in that sense just going out kind of you know craving creativity and what you know other people are doing towards um trick um i'm in a very kind of confused space because my elder sister you know is in is probably in her second second third year of accounting she wants to be the ca and i i'm the artistic child in the family you know um i felt a bit like a black sheep at the time so it was hard convincing my mom that hey mom i want to take this route um i think it was only until i discovered graphic design and kind of you know that it is a legitimate career space in the in, you know in the creative uh, in the creative space um explaining it to my mom took some doing you know i had to break it down to her that this is what i would be doing and um to a point where she kind of was like okay you really want to do this so you know go ahead my first year in tertiary was was an interesting one obviously liberating cuz you know you're out of the house you're staying at at res and my case a commune um it was a very liberating year a year of self discovery um obviously due to financial issues with my family i wasn't able to proceed um my mother was covering the bulk of my sister's fees and her you know living costs in cape town um so it was a very difficult thing for for her to not be able to you know support the both of us at the time um so i post kind of you know um my journey with tertiary i just decided that i'm going to somehow find myself in this creative space um i'm going to use what i have access to and build and learn and my entire journey of kind of create you know becoming a creative a graphic designer was working through print shops working under creative dire- directors in small agencies and really just being a sponge absorbing as much as possible and in as much as um my journey you know perhaps wasn't a journey that was um one of qualification um in kind of in societal terms um i learned so much more than i probably would have by literally just walking through life and um absorbing as much as possible um my 20s were also a very interesting period um i spent a good part of my 20s in cape town and um i think you know cape town kind of versus joburg you know the contrast is is clear like cape town is a very relaxed space and it really allowed you know for me to explore more of who i am and um i think what kept me grounded then um was just r- rediscovering um a sense of connection you know to to spirituality to god um and i think that that's probably the common thread throughout my journey is just that grounding that place that you go back to no matter how far off you go or um or where you find yourself in life that space that you can go back to and be familiar with who you are and that core space yeah that's what kept me grounded in my 20s which was also a very interesting period a very a very fun period i think i was enjoying um the process of becoming you know the creative i wanted to be um i never thought that it would i thought i'd be forced into some career path um that i really wasn't interested in um it really took some doing you know like i said earlier to get my mom to that place where she was really comfortable um with this idea of graphic design so my fondest memories were just you know just feeling a sense of hey i'm on this path you know i'm I'm doing what exactly what I want to be doing. I'm not compromising. I see a lot of people that are in tertiary that are 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 taking on courses that their parents forced them to, you know, um people that are completely unhappy and I just I felt privileged to be doing something that I love. Coming up next, Rurumai dives deeper into things she accepted. Um I think I I kind of just adopted what was given to me you know in my upbringing without really asking questions without really examining
my sense of spirituality as a teen was very religious. Um, I was brought up in a religious home. My understanding of um, spirituality and connecting to a higher power was through Christianity and um, a very kind of um, a very restrictive and also kind of um, a false sense of you know um, understanding relationship with a higher power. Um, I think I, I kind of just adopted what was given to me, you know, in my upbringing without really asking questions, without really examining, you know, what spirituality is for me personally. I think my understanding of Christianity and, and religion at the time um, was such that, you know, anything that I did in terms of just exploring life in an organic way, I questioned because church was a space that was not safe. Church was a space where um, people that were living their lives were just, you know, were judged, were condemned. Um, so it, it was a weird kind of balance to strike, you know, kind of being very involved in church and youth and stuff, um, youth ministry, and also being this person that is just exploring life. Um, it, was, it was a hard balance to strike until kind of I evolved in my thinking and my understanding of what um, spirituality should be on a personal level. I think, um, if any, I took away the sense of community um, from church um, and just fellowship became an important part of my life. You know, having fellowship, being there for other people and yeah, I think now spiritually, um, I've come to understand that spirituality is a very personal journey. Um, you can not impose your view of, of spirituality, a higher power, or what life should be to the next person. Um, it's a very personal, personal experience. Um, for me right now, I think my spirituality, my relationship with God um, is kind of my core space as a human being. It's my core driving force. Um, it's the place that I always revisit when I struggle through life, you know, as, as, as you would. Um, the challenges that you face through life, um, people have diff different coping mechanisms. And for me, I think that's just my core space um, of revisiting purpose, revisiting um, who I am and what it is I'm doing here. Um, wow, my first love, first crush, yes, my first crush, uh, my first crush was a little white boy named Andrew in Australia. Andrew is a bit of a, a softy, you know, and I always had his back, you know, if other kids were picking on him, I'd be there fighting for him, you know, and um, I remember, <laughs> weird memory, um, I remember going to Andrew's house, having told his mom that I had got permission to go and spend the afternoon and play you know and um yeah i i ended up at andrew's house we were playing with his legos it was nice they dropped me back home and then i got a hiding like in front of andrew <laughs> so my first crush experience was rough yeah my crush saw me get a whipping <laughs> my first love hmm. my first love was my high school sweetheart. We used to catch the train together and um, we weren't in the same school, but he was stalking me all the time. He'd always be peering out of the window and greeting and saying hi until eventually he, you know, um, came to our high school and um, we, yeah, we were high school sweethearts. He was, he was great. Love, ugh. love for me is, it's such an ever-evolving concept. Um, I think my understanding of love from when I was younger to what it is now is completely different. Um, love, I think for me right now, is, uh, is honesty and truth. Love is truth. Just being as authentic as you can be with somebody and finding a safe space, you know, with somebody that is just completely, um, that completely allows you to be who you are, you know. I think love is um, is your sense of accountability to the next person, being accountable, you know, knowing that there are people that rely on you on, on different levels, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, um, 
on any level just being mindful of that that there are people in your realm um, that depend on you and showing up for those people I think that that's what love is for me um, I think I think my biggest challenges were just the mental hurdles you know um, as I mentioned before kind of you know the tertiary journey not panning out that was a huge mental journey I mean a mental hurdle I had to overcome um, also you know on a personal level having experienced violation um, as a woman um, was was also a, a very conflicting space for me in terms of you know redefining how it is I view men post that and I think any woman that has experienced um, any level of violation um, will tell you that overcoming that hurdle of viewing men in, in, in a different light and you know finding the tools and the resources to work through that trauma um, is very challenging. I'll probably refer to my spirituality as being the anchor um, but also having amazing male friends just male friends that you know um, that showed me that um, you know not all men are are, are res responding to life from a per place of brokenness um, i've had am amazing male friends that have just been light and love in my life and that changed you know my my paradigm in many ways if i was speaking to a younger me i would tell her she's going to be perfectly fine i would tell her that she is valuable and gifted and she has so much to offer the world more with Rurumai as she shares some beautiful gems of wisdom it is the energy the diligence the heart that you put into what you do you know that will actually make room for you in this world I knew from an early age that I wanted to be an artist um, because I was that kid in class who'd be sketching away while I'm supposed to be doing my math and um, my teachers were forever complaining that this person's this child is always drawing and I'd get notes in my diary <laughs> you know um, so I think I always wanted to be somebody that creates um, from an early age and um, I never had aspirations, you know, your kind of t typical career path um, aspirations. I, I never really wanted to be a lawyer or anything to that effect. I, I knew that creativity was my space. I just didn't know how to define that, you know, as a child. I was definitely inspired by um, by comic books and, and that sort of thing. Um, I don't think I was your typical girly girl child. Um, I had a lot of, you know, boy friends. Um, that would share their comic books and you know now it's sketch with you know with, with, with other kids um, so I think it was definitely comic books um, superhero vibes um, and and music as well and movies film you know um, I enjoyed watching movies and just kind of that you know um, uh, stimulation of your imagination as a kid I think I just wanted to be a creative force um, I was inspired by layout magazines that you know were being curated by you know black creatives um, I don't know if you remember why mag um, at some point um, I was really inspired by that sort of thing publishing um, beautiful layouts you know that young creatives were driving um, and so I just really wanted to see myself in that space and um, a slash you know being an exhibiting artist a practicing artist um, is something that I also wanted to pursue. A notable exhibition for me was in Dakar, in fact, in Gore Island, Senegal. Um, and that was with a group of um, multidisciplinary artists, including Lois Omkize. It was such a special experience um, because I think looking back on my journey, there are certain things that I didn't think I could do because I didn't go through the journey of qualifying qualification um, of going through the tertiary journey completing that and I think um, it validated me in major ways to be exhibiting abroad you know with the cream of the crop I think every um, every achievement and every milestone for me um, 
I feel on on levels beyond you know um, just being excited it's it's such a deep sense of validation every time I'm able to achieve something or afford an opportunity that is you know that is amazing um, because you realize that and it's the lessons we learn in life. You realize that there are certain things that do not validate you. It is the energy, the diligence, the heart that you put into what you do, you know, that will actually make room for you in this world, not necessarily what society deems to be the path that you need to take, you know. I think it's, it's, it's almost victimhood to look at yourself as a female artist, as a female whatnot, you know. Um, I had to kind of get past looking at myself as a female artist. I don't deny that we have issues in, in the creative industry where it is male dominated, there are racial, you know, um, politics. Um, but I think I have learned to just carve out my own space as an artist. I think for me, I had to look at my life and I had to ask myself the question, am I going to live my life and navigate through life kind of with a, with a limited mindset um, and with a, a mindset of victimhood in the spaces that I enter? Um, and I decided that I would not be that person. I decided that actually I'm able to carve out my own space as an individual um, without being predisposed to failure or predisposed to um, uh, being marginalized in spaces. Yeah, I think that's the energy that I want to bring into every space I enter. I think what inspires me, the people around me inspire me. People that are fearless, people that are sharing their lights and um, are just unapologetic about who they are. That's what inspires me. It inspires me to be even more of that. I think everything that I'm pursuing at this point in time is driven by that core purpose, to inspire others. Um, art is beautiful in the sense that, you know, 10 different people will interpret one piece differently. Um, I'm in, in, in a space where I'm creating more art um, to have more ex exhibitions um, and my hope is that each piece kind of um, is a piece that people connect to in different ways. Um, I'm creating art in a very spiritual level at this point, you know, and um, everything that I'm doing, I'm doing prayerfully and um, wanting to put an energy in it that brings light. Um, that's who I am right now. I think some of my biggest highlights, um, a big milestone, probably the most recent would be um, doing the global citizen branding and just seeing kind of, you know, my creative work with Beyonce's name on it and, you know, these amazing um, names. Um, that was a big deal for me. That was a huge point of uh, validation and um, an achievement. I consider myself to be a person who um, who is allowing every aspect of herself to flourish and to blossom. Um, I think that you know there are experiences in life that can stifle you as a human being, as an individual, and um, I think I'm in a very beautiful space right now um, where I understand my purpose. I understand the purpose of what it is I'm doing, whether it is creative, whether it is on, on any kind of level. Um, there's kind of an intentionality that you have at a certain point in life about everything that you do. And um, it's just, it's a beautiful space right now to, to know who I am, to know what it is that I have to offer and to know what I want to leave behind through these gifts that I have. Join the conversation on our Facebook page at Tando Channel and let us know what resonated the most